uh, political gatherings for the next 30 days. Welcome. This is uh, Youth and Politics. This is a form part of the conversation today, including the Building Bridges Initiative, BBI. Is it possible for us to be able to go through one month without political gatherings? And is this something that our own officials will handle? Will they do it? Will they uh, adhere to the COVID-19 regulations? And is the BBI, uh, has reggae been stopped? That is a question that uh, many people, many Kenyans were debating during the weekend this is why in the morning thank you very much for keeping it why two five four if you just join us you're just in time for this very discussion to help us understand more about this in this conversation i am with a two-year junior who has been with me since the beginning uh, he is a political analyst karibu sana thank you so much again uh -huh. and uh, joining us on set is roy opuba odm youth leader of Ndiwa constituency karibu sana thank you uh, the hashtag is why in the morning keep the conversation going. Your thoughts, your opinion counts at Ramaguko at why in the morning at uh, the hashtag is why in the morning at Y254 channel that is on Twitter. Make sure that you head over there also on Facebook Y254. Drop your comments and your thoughts as you continue this conversation. Tell us what you think about the th issues that we shall address and the opinions that shall be shared during this conversation. Disclaimer. Comments shared during this conversation do not reflect the stand of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation or Y254 TV. Now, gentlemen, let's start with uh, the containment measures for COVID-19. Banning political gatherings for the next 30 days. Is it feasible? Roy? It is, it is feasible. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to me, it's a good thing. There is a popular joke that is said that should any day uh, we have a situation where coronavirus gets to Raila, mm. then this country must be disbanded. And they yeah, will be you, you saw that video. Yes. So <laughs> right now, because Baba is having a, a home rest, the country has been disbanded in terms of politics. Everybody has gone home until when Baba comes back, maybe in, in another 30 days. So to us, it's okay, but reggae is still on. Reggae is still on. Reggae is still on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that video. I saw that. <laughs> that thing made me laugh for days. <laughs> what do you think about uh, about this? Feasible? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, the country is not yet disbanded. We we've not gone home. Uh, but uh, the measures that uh, the government is taking to contain the uh, the, uh, the the pandemic are they actually feasible. It's it's all right, but. Uh, for, that, for, for those of us who are on the other side of the political divide, mm. uh, we're not worried uh, for the stop uh, for the, the sessions that have been banned because we already have a head start. Mm. We, are, we are in the lead. Uh, what kind of head start are you talking about? Uh, those of us who are campaigning for presidency for Dr. William Bruto, we're already in the lead. Uh, we, my friend here, Roy, they are, they are trying to catch up. So I think maybe they might feel uh, the ban was actually... Uh, not so uh, good on them, but for us, we, we have nothing to lose. We, we are in the lead, uh, we are comfortable. Mm. For, for, the, for the coalitions that are trying to form coming up, uh, they're the ones who are losing on time. So for us, uh, we... You feel we, like you're, a, you're, you're, you're we, way ahead of time. Yeah, but yeah. So, so um, regardless of the, the bans that uh, have been put in place, even for federals, because now that, that is where leaders normally um, take advantage of uh, you know the, the the platform last week we had the funeral of uh, you know uh, one of uh, the mp sons we, 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 you feel in your opinion it does not affect your ambitions or plans as a uda uh because yes, as UDA, you, you, yes. You, you, yes. Uh, but particularly you know politics is more i told you politics is more boardroom our decisions uh, and plans are made in boardrooms. Uh, what you usually see at political gatherings so, uh, are just what we deliberated uh, uh, at the back room. So uh, for us, I think we still have, uh, we're having uh, conversations. We, we're having new ways of uh, doing meetings, Zoom meetings. So it is, it is just a, a 30 days to sit, reflect, uh, and uh, continue planning on how uh, to win this uh, as early as possible. 
<laughs> Interesting indeed. Uh, do, do, do you have a, a rejoinder for that? For that, you're saying that you are the ones who are going to be affected, and by you, you mean ODM. Uh, we have. I don't know. We actually don't have competitors right now, but I think he is part of uh, the formations that will be our competitors. So I think he can't speak. He can't speak on that. Okay. okay. I think uh, what happens is these people are missing out on something. We are a country that. Uh, that, that embraces science and when it comes to matters COVID, now on a serious note, mm. uh, we have had a surge, uh, an upward surge in, in infections that is according to the, the, the research centers and the doctors. So it's only prudent enough that we take measures that are going to help us curb, curb, curb this pandemic. Mm. It's not about politics because if at all, nobody, fear, nobody fears anybody in this country in terms of campaign be it in terms of resources and the masses. Mm -hmm. This thing has not been stopped because of politics. We are looking at the health because life is more important. We mm -hmm. can campaign from now till eternity. Mm -hmm. So according to me, I think the president was just okay to, mm -hmm. to, to, to put measures that are going to control the number of people who gather at, at, a, at a particular place, mm -hmm. be it for the funerals, be it for the social gatherings, the, the normal social gatherings. So mm -hmm. let's wait for the 30 days. Mm -hmm. Let's see what... Uh, our specialists in terms of science are, uh, are going to be able to, to, to do in the next 30 days. Now the question is, will we even wait? You know, will we even uh, wait? Is it, is it possible? Remember, we have by-elections coming up. This Thursday, we have the by-elections for Machakos. Yes. The senatorial seat. The Cavindo is there, and so many uh, leaders who are expected to be on the ballot Will this wait political gatherings? You see, we, we even had uh, people, like let me give an example, the countries like USA, they had general elections during the pandemic. I believe, I trust, uh, I trust in our, I believe in our government, I mm -hmm. trust in what they say, and I am sure that they are going to have the en enough containment measures even during the, during the election time mm -hmm. for Machakos. Mm -hmm. uh, by elections, do, I, do, I, I, I agree. Mm. To a larger extent, that uh, uh, the measures that were taken into place, they are not only just to burn on political uh, rallies. Mm. Uh, it was purely on health issues. Sure. But uh, just to remind you, uh, we 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 are not uh, actually aggrieved that uh, there is a, a ban uh, of political uh, gatherings. We we are just not um, in panic that we are not going to do politics. We are on a comfortable lead, so we are just comfortable with the ban, it's a time to re-strategize. Uh, coming back to your question uh, on uh, the by-elections, I, I think politics is still going on. If you go to Machakos today, you'll find the candidates either door to door. Uh, there is campaigning going on. So I think uh, politics, the large gatherings have stopped, but politics has not stopped. We, mm. We're talking politics right now. So mm. uh, politics will go on. Uh, in terms of uh, the big gatherings, uh, I will agree with the Roy. We mm -hmm. need to stop for now. Let's see how that spans out. And I wonder how the by-elections will take place now that we have a series, actually a series of by-elections for the next 30 days. How will we manage to even go out and vote? You know, um, during the poll process, how will will it be? And uh, let, let me come to you, Roy. How, what is your expectation for a by-election to be held during a time like this where social distancing needs to be uh, really observed? Is it something that is feasible, that can take place without having super spreaders, you know, uh, you know, attending such places and, you know, sp increasing the, the, the rate of infection for COVID-19? I think... Uh as a people, we need to we need to we need to follow that. That is, if we love our country, if we love our health, mm. and if we love even for the politicians, if they love the people really, they need to they need to do so. But as you know, there are people who have they are behaving like children with the sugar rush. They have high affinity for crowds. It's their first time they are seeing such crowds, mm. and that is when I speak about I talk about the team from my from my brother's side. <laughs> they are they are they are just happy to to have crowds around them. You, you have no, no. Uh, I think he's referring to uh, Dr. William. Uh, he, this is not the first time he's attracting big crowds. Uh, he's been with uh, Raila before. Raila is known to be having those big crowds. So he has been used to that. He was with uh, Uhuru. He has been with Moi. So 
we not uh, trigger happy to see these dogs. <laughs> we not. Uh, we are not. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, the, the, it's to, to, to something else. Yes. Still on the DP, he said on Friday, and this is where he really poked holes on a few issues, uh, especially on ODM leader Raila Odinga, saying that he was behind the former prime minister uh, and his political success. And, I, and uh, speaking during uh, the Haslam Nation Empowerment uh, Blitz in Busia, or the, uh, the DP said uh, uh, Raila's career had blossomed courtesy of his support. He took a quick trip down memory lane and uh, said that uh, he had put his life on the line, including risking getting incarcerated at the ICC after supporting Raila during the 2007 uh, uh, election polls. What do you think? What's your reaction in regards to that? Uh, uh, I will say nothing but to affirm the statement uh, made by the deputy president. Mm. Uh, the DP is known to be a kingmaker. Uh, anywhere he touches, he turns to gold. The last time he was working with the, uh, Mr. Uh, Odinga, and Mr. Odinga ascended to a very powerful position of the prime minister. The, the last time he was working with the president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, he became a president twice. So it's uh, it's the reality. You're uh, saying all this is courtesy of Dr. Yeah, William Ruto. Dr. William Ruto. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, an issue of uh, trying to brag, but it's the reality. Uh, Raila, to, to his own right, is a, a, an astute politician, but uh, William Ruto had a hand in uh, uh, when uh, the Raila became uh, one of the most powerful individuals in this country. So credit to him. Hmm. Your relation to that, Roy? I think um, one thing is the people from the DP side, the people from William's side, and I never want it to be an issue. Hmm. They think that William has the gate, has the gate pass to status, hmm. and I want to dare them. If you have the gate pass to status, then you feel you can get to status. Then just get it, get to status in 2022. Don't bother us around with so many stories. Okay, in tw in 2007, Israel who helped Ruto more than. Ruto was already partyless. Now we brought him into ODM. We made him, we made him powerful. We even gave him a ministry. But why did why he says that uh, Raila Raila chased him away? Raila did not chase him away. It was chased after he had started stealing. So, so what, what are you talking about? Stealing what? what? Ruto, when Ruto was fired in, by, by Raila during the coalition government, there was a scandal. That had, that had come from, from his ministry. You're talking about corruption cases. No, corruption cases. Mm -hmm. That is why Raila, 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 you see Raila as somebody who, who doesn't tolerate corruption, that doesn't tolerate impunity, had to push him away. So if but Ruto, it has not been proven in a court of law. And I don't agree with the sentiment that Raila does not uh, condone uh, corruption. A few months ago, he was sanitizing governors at his office. Uh, you could just go to his office if you are corrupt, and then the next day you you scot free. Who said that those people are corrupt? Uh, and was it proven uh, in the court of law that they were corrupt? Uh, was it proven that the governors are corrupt? In the, in the court, that in the public, court, in the public court, uh, yeah, uh, we could uh, see that, uh, for instance, a governor from Central, who I don't want to mention his, her or his name, uh, actually after visiting uh, Raila Odinga's office, the next time uh, instead of facing a uh, a full plenary in the Senate, uh, a select committee uh, selected senators who were friendly, mm -hmm. who were selected into a committee, and they, they sanitized her. So how, how does this connect to who supported who more in uh, their political uh, career? I think that was just, that was just political uh, conmanship because when uh, our deputy president goes to areas that are tend to be inclined to, to, to the Honorable Prime Minister, he tends to call, first of all, he tends to call Raila Aguambo or Tinga. But when he goes the other side, when he's in his, in his home base, he calls, he calls our Prime Minister Mganga. So the guy looked at the crowd that day, and he saw that the crowd was not on his side. Mm. So he had to say anything that can be appealing to them. But we are telling him, we as the people, of, we, we as the, the sons of Raila, that be as it may, let's assume he's the one who gave Raila the Prime Ministership. So, let me quote what Honorable uh, Ruto said. I am asking you, am I not the one who pushed Aguambo until he became Prime Minister? Was I not taken to The Hague and almost got jailed? Was I not the one who pushed him to become the Prime Minister? 
that is what he said during that conversation. So echoing what you're saying, so um, you feel that he is not a kingmaker. He is not a kingmaker. That is just political commentary and political narratives. He is not a kingmaker. You know, I think uh, Roy is even giving us a credit uh, that uh, the DP knows how to marshal crowds when he's in Busia. He knows uh, the, the good uh, choice of words when he's on the other side. You're giving credit to the next president, and I like it that way. Mm. Uh, it, it, it is a reality to be seen. It's, it, it's in the open, uh, uh, in, in the public domain, that uh, William Ruto was strongly even uh, agitating for a re-election in 2007. He never even wanted the Rela to accept the prime minister position. Because by then, uh, Deputy President, uh, the current, believed that uh, Rela Odinga had won the elections. So in the circumstances that Ruto wanted for a fresh election, for to, he was wishing good for the uh, for Raila Odinga. But what happened uh, when uh, after Ruto was appointed into into cabinet, and when Ruto tried to flex his political muscle, Raila never likes that. He will push you out. So you can see the likes of Mdavadi, who never wanted really to run away, and the likes of. Uh, Nyaga, Balala, they were lost. They were vanquished politically. Oh, Honorable to say this, when I left Agwambo to Kalonzo, Mudavadi and Mutambula, <laughs> did they help him in any seat? No, a they good could not help. A question to Roy. One thing I want to, uh, first want to affirm to you is that since Ruto left ODM, Raila has never lost an election. Raila won in 2013. Raila won in 2017. <laughs> so, we can only say that they stole from Raila in 2013 and 2017. Raila has never lost. That is something that must sink in first into Ruto's mind before he starts saying that he helped Raila in 207. Even that 207, we, Raila did not lose. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's an opinion he's entitled to. Uh -huh. uh, but if you win an election in this country, you get sworn in uh, by the Chief Justice. Uh, that has never happened. Mm. We've been uh, in 2013. We were in court. In 2017, we were in court. Uh, but uh, uh, it has never materialized that there is no court in Kenya that has ever pronounced that uh, Raila Odinga has won elections. Mm. In 2017, uh, the Supreme Court actually said there were irregularities in the process of doing the elections. They never said a candidate A or B won the elections. So, so that's why they ordered for a fresh election. But they cowed out and they ran. Uh, we just had to run and win the elections again. So this conversation is about who has um, you know, more power, who helped who? I, I'll ask who? Uh, Roy a question. Uh -huh. uh, remember the, uh, the former Pentagon members of the ODM? Tell me who was more, uh, who, who brought more havoc when he left ODM? R William Ruto left with the almost 4 million votes when he left ODM. Uh, Mdavadi, uh, Mdavadi never left with anything from ODM. Mdavadi is still a, a tribal chief in Western. He cannot, he cannot even get a million votes from Western. Uh, who else was there? Balala. Balala cannot even uh, get 20 votes uh, for anybody from Coast. But when Ruto left, he left with so much votes from uh, the, the Raila basket. And it's mm. something that we must accept. Let me, let me give you time to respond to that before I move to the next question. Uh, there's something that he says that when Ruto left, Ruto left with a bigger chunk of ODM votes. ODM was not affected. ODM was not affected in any way. ODM is still the largest and the most democratic party in this country. And why it, why it that uh, Ruto was the one who was controlling ODM and giving it a name? Then ODM would have died in 2010 when he left. ODM is still there. ODM still has structures. It's only William who has changed parties four times since he left ODM. To mean who is more non-organized than than the other, mm. it means if William needs the presidency, then he can only come back to ODM or look for Aila. Now um, I have um, something that I've been uh, wondering: Is it possible, just by any chance, that by 2022 we have a pact between Honorable Raila Odinga and Dr. William Ruto? Is it possible? that these two could actually meet and form a coalition? Yes, I will uh, agree. I will uh, approach that question from two different perspectives. Yes, there might be a handshake after 2022 elections. Before? No, not before. After we have won the elections, 
uh, most pro- was one. the deputy president <laughs> most probably uh, we will uh, look for Raila uh, and uh, have a handshake <laughs> but i don't think we will have another bbi that's a uh, scenario one the most likely uh-huh. uh, the second one currently as things ra- are i don't think the deputy president needs raila raila needs william ruto so if uh, that was to happen something i don't want to happen for now uh, uh, then Ruto, raila has to look for ruto how, how, how does raila need william ruto yet since the handshake began till now we've not had any instance where he actually needed him politically uh, politically raila will be orphaned after bbi so he will need uh, another kingmaker but this time round ruto won't be available to be a kingmaker now the only uh, the only uh, remaining option for raila is uh, uh, to just say a charge and say ruto tosha so that he can be seen as a statesman uh, but uh, as working with raila at a friendly level not a political level again but after the elections, after the elections. i think uh, for somebody who has never had his name on the on the general election ballot box as a presidential candidate Raila has no fear or or, argue, or argument with such a person so let first william ruto bring his name on the presidential ballot paper for the first time in his life then they can come and talk about people who have but for the, uh, uh, the deputy president has been on the ballot twice no that was as a deputy he, he has just been a pool baby people have been running and he's behind now this time <laughs> let him come and vibe you call the whole office of a deputy president a pool baby yes let him come <laughs> and vibe so that we see the weight but that office has weight no a deputy president a deputy president it is the president who ran with the deputy behind him so raila no. has been running in front let no. let let him run and then we can see if whatever mm. this shenanigans he has been saying but i'm asking are true is it possible that before the elections we have a pact between these two individuals unless they come and apologize <laughs> who comes the people who have been calling raila mganga they no apologize. no <laughs> the, the same people have been uh, calling the deputy president uh, some names hey. and uh uh-huh. they have really been calling us uh, some bad names so and i say this William Ruto will not look for Raila Odinga but Raila Odinga is the one to look for William Ruto at the moment we are leading uh, by a very big margin so we don't need Raila Odinga how, uh, what, what, what did you do to, uh, how did you come by to the information that you know you are leading with a big margin i will throw back a question mm. to Roy again mm. tell me who's running for presidency right now and tell who, tell me who else is uh, against the deputy president many people are even looking for endorsements honorable uh, musala mudavidi also you know they are talking about uh, 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 you know vying for presidency uh, governors talking about it that's why they were kicked out of government because these people they have been running for the last 4 years almost 8 years since 2013 just running running and running all right i want us to shift gears again BBI. For the Sili, uh, Secretary General Je- uh, that is Njeru uh, Kadango says that uh, an al- analysis of the constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 shows that they are, there are multiple proposals which fall part of the party's values and the aspirations of the uh, you know, hard-fought uh, gains of the 2020 constitution. But now, according to Kadangu, the party will embark on an issue-based uh, uh, campaign to oppose the BBI proposals. What do you think about that, Roy? Uh, I think uh, everybody has a right to either support mm. or uh, oppose the BBI. But it is laughable when briefcase parties like for the Silica we are telling us that they want to oppose the BBI. You, yep. you, you don't consider them as a solid party? No. What, what does for the Silica have really, apart from a registration certificate? Those are small parties. They can regroup there and they decide on whatever they want to do. Whatever we know is that the big parties, that is the largest party, the two largest parties in Kenya, have decided that BBI is good. And we, the followers, we have really, are also agreeing with you that BBI is good. For the Sili, they have no representation in parliament. They have no representation in the, in the counties. So who, on whose behalf are they, are they talking? That's just a group, a group of cartels who have sat in some office or some, some, some hotel and have decided that they want, they want to say BBI is bad. 
But now when you make such a claim without any proof, how do you claim that a whole party that has been registered, uh, a cartel? Not a small party, definitely. A big party should have representation any in Any small party is a cartel? No. Who has given the mandate to come and say that the people do not want BBI? If BBI was passed in a majority of the county assemblies and it was passed by the MCS, who represents Kenyans? So hmm. Kenyans told the MCS, pass BBI. BBI is going to pass in parliament. So who is this for the city to come and say that people are saying which people? What, 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 what? What is the litmus test, litmus test to determine a party's uh, a scale, whether it's big or small? The number, of, the number of MPs, senators and governors that it has, and even MCS. I think I will uh, conclusively agree with him uh, that uh, Fodasil is a, is a small party. Uh, I don't think uh, they will have a real impact uh, trying to oppose BBI. BBI, BBI is, a, is an agreement of uh, some two individuals, some uh, big political individuals in this country uh, that came up with an idea to mutilate the constitution of Kenya. Uh, now it has reached a stage that it is being forced on Kenyans. Uh, I don't think any sane Kenyan currently will uh, want to use his resources or her resources trying to campaign against the BBI because it's like a it's a predetermined outcome. Uh, we've been actually calling for uh, a, multi, a multiple uh, choice referendum so that I have the choice to vote in for the 35%. I have the choice to say that uh, the, the opposition leader uh, joins parliament. But I also want the, the opportunity to say that we don't want a, a balloon uh, uh, parliament, we cannot have 94 senators and 600 uh, MPs. Uh, mm. That's a, that, that, that's what we are against. I also don't want to uh, see um, our uh, the judiciary being uh, monitored uh, by the executive. So there are some good things in BBI that we really support, and there are some things that we need to have a choice. Do we want them or not? Then why don't you form a part or an agreement with Fonda Sili? since you agree on these things. Now, let me quote what uh, Kab uh, Kadango said. He said that the party will shortly be settling on a no secretariat and a campaign committee and invites all Kenyans on good will support these terms. Now, what they are, they are, they are talking about, they are fought against the very things you've talked about, the ombudsman issue. Yeah. They have fought against it. They are against. They're saying no to it. The, the, the expansion of the executive, they're also saying no to that, which you are also saying. Then why not come together? Uh, we don't want to be forced to take uh, positions for political purposes. You know, you, the, know, you, you, you cannot d make a coalition with uh, any party. No, we can. We can make coalitions. Mm. Uh, yes, we can. But for the C is not uh, one of them that we really considering to have a coalition with. But uh, <laughs> we, we don't want to be forced to take, uh, to take sides. You know, the aim, the aim was Let's go into a referendum, let's isolate some guys, let mm -hmm. them go to the opposition, let them lose the referendum so that we can build a momentum for 2022. You feel they will lose the referendum? No, they, they, they wanted uh, some guys to oppose the referendum so that they are on the losing side because they, 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 the referendum is predetermined. It's going to pass. And uh, take this to the bank. The BBI will pass with a, a, a very a very low margin of uh, voter turnout, maybe uh, 4 million or 5 million, mm. uh, the people will turn out to vote. Majority of Kenyans will not go to vote. The, the few will go to vote, uh, will make BBA pass. Will make BBA pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, all right. But you still uh, say that they're not a party of note. And I wonder, uh, you know, how you you, you, you you claim to be a movement of uh, that that unites Kenyans when some Kenyans are not of note. Uh, politically, you, you you need to have weight uh, to be considered <laughs> on uh, <laughs> on some political tables. So this 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 no campaign um, will it pass, Roy? As I said earlier, everybody is everybody has a right. Yeah. If you feel you have the you are you are not you have the uh, what you have the capacity 
mm-hmm. to campaign and you know when you are campaigning against you no know, you have to move across the country these mm. parties that are only stationed in some one ward or one constituency or one one county they just happen if you want to campaign against the bbi mm. you have to move around from mombasa to western to rift valley and convince kenyans that the bbi is a, is a bad thing for them mm-hmm. which kenyans already know that bbi is a good thing for them including right. me maybe a question do you agree with the fact that we should have an ombudsman in the office uh, uh, overseeing the judiciary do you agree that we need 94 senators well it, it is in the bbi and odm i support the bbi so you support everything in the bbi with all the full stops and the commas <laughs> <laughs> this is what we want in to change. The punctuation marks. Yes. This is what we want to change in this country. We need what? to support uh, what you agree uh-huh. personally, uh-huh. And not because uh, my political uh, godfathers have supported it. If today William Ruto stood and said that he supports BBI confusingly, mm. I myself will have my reservations. I still don't agree that we should have a, an ombudsman. But you must respect the fact that if I support the, if I support that cause, mm. you must respect that you must not look into it as if uh, I'm supporting it because somebody else supports it. Mm-hmm. But do you actually support a ballooned parliament? There's nothing like a ballooned parliament. Those are just propaganda that uh, that UDA, the will, the wheelbarrow people, were trying to put across so that BBI is rejected. But it was very funny that <laughs> BBI passed excellently in the county assemblies. Yeah, if, was, if, if, if I was also given the two million, huh? I would vote yes, as the name's here. Let me not go there. <laughs> <laughs> let, me ho- let, let me quote from Rabbi John Buddy. And he said, and I quote, Mount Kenya will play a key role in the succession politics, but we are already immune to emotions and politics of betrayal. Uhuru needs Raila for the behind shake objectives to come true. You agree with that, Roy? Yes. If this is um, the statement, he added, there should be no panic. Betrayal is part of politics and it depends on circumstances, politics and interests. The handshake gave Huru the calm to rule the country. So if um, this is the case of, of course, they were, he was talking about ensuring that the handshake lives up to its expectations, especially when it comes to you know, the uniting factor of uh, the BBI document. Do you see this document also um, forming part of the conversations of 2022 post-referendum? No, no. BBI is BBI as itself. Let us not... Um, let us, we as the ODM party, we are not mixing BBI with 2022. BBI was to bring prosperity and peace to the country. What happens after BBI? Every, everybody, as Raila had already said, everybody will take their own path. Hmm. Yes. Uh, no, you, you. That is uh, the latest twist. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, prior to uh, prior to everything that is happening in this country, mm. I'm very very sure that most of ODM supporters uh, knew that BBI was here to have a political uh, agenda. Mm. Most uh, uh, supporters of Raila know that BBI was here to help. Raila actually finally uh, achieve his uh, presidential ambition. Mm. Uh, but with the fact that they have started to realize that uh, it's very unlikely that uh, uh, President Uhuru will support Raila Odinga, I mm. think they are now mentally preparing their supporters. Uh, mm-hmm. Fero is already shifting and he is uh, now accepting the fact that they will be used past the BBI because currently Truth be told, uh, the president cannot work without Raila. I, 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 I want us to, to finish this conversation. Well, uh, yeah, you said the president cannot work with Honorable Raila but he's in government, which raises lots of questions. But anyway, Senator uh, Pogisio uh, said that currently the handshake and the BBI are amongst the biggest headaches uh, for the president. Senator, uh, uh, the, the Senator uh, Majority Leader, Samuel Pogiso. Do you agree with that, um, uh, uh, Roy? You see, first, the first thing I want, I want, I want us to, to get, uh, you must uh, know that Raila is not in government. 
Mm. When BBI was formed, BBI was formed because this country had gotten to a place where the supporters of Raila had said that let's, div let's divide this country, let's have this country become two countries. Each, each county who supports, um, the, that was the NASA by then, collects revenue and submit to the NASA secretariat. So when BBA was brought, it was brought to unite the country. That's why it's called the Building Bridges Initiative. Should it be that the BB, BBI is the biggest stress to, to the president, mm. then that, uh, that is to him, that is his own stress. Mm. But we as the supporters of Raila and we as the ODM, we understand that BBI is just for prosperity and for peace. Mm. That's what we have to achieve as a country, as a people as people who share the Kenyan flag. All right. uh -huh. That is all for us. But uh -huh. is it really true that uh, BBA is for peace? Uh, if BBA was for peace, then we could never have seen uh, uh, violence in Kibra, in Sambueni, in Matungu. I hope we won't see that in, uh, in Machakos. Mm. Because if BBA was for peace, then we should be seeing real peace. I want us to, this, this, to finish this conversation, and uh, this is where I would like to uh, end. If uh, because now the violations from Machakos are in a few days from now. Um, what is the expectation for this by-election that shall take place in Machakos? Just in a short period and how you feel the BBI could take center stage on this by-election? Let me start with you. Uh, BBI, uh, on the Machakos issue, I think uh, uh, the, the, there's a coalition coming up, uh, the Gideon... Uh, Davadi Kalonzo Alliance. Mm. I think they will again want to test their muscle in uh, in Machakos. Uh, and one thing that you can see that they are trying to uh, separate themselves from Raila. So if again they win in Machakos, I think it will be a big plus for them. But I strongly believe and know that uh, I, uh, Machakos will be the first uh, Senate position uh, for UDA. UDA is gonna win that seat. Uh, very early in the morning. <laughs> All right. And, uh, that's our first baby in the Senate. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Within 30 seconds. I wonder when, when, when he says that uh, ODM or Raila will lose Machakos, how do you lose what you didn't have? First of all, we have no candidate in Machakos. ODM is not a national party. It cannot so we candidates. are not going to lose anything. You can never lose what you didn't have. So from your conversation, remove ODM from that by election. We wish the best person to win that seat. We are not vying, we don't have a candidate there, we don't mind about it. All right. That is what brings us to the end of this conversation. It's hot. <laughs> I wish I had more time, uh, a gentleman. But I was with uh, uh, um, uh, two uh, gentlemen here talking about politics, uh, youth and politics in regards to the political succession of BBI uh, that shall take place in uh, 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 the, the, the discussion on BBI that uh, shall take place during the by-elections that shall have happened in Machakos. So we remember it is taking place on Thursday. I was with Roy Opuba who is the ODM youth leader of Diva constituency and uh, a two-year junior who is a political analyst. Gentlemen, Asante Nisana. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours. The hashtag, why in the morning? At Ramaguko at Y254 channel. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Now, after this break, it's all about academics versus career. Which one affects the other? Don't go too far. <laughs> Thank you.